wife. She is the founder and artistic director of Shakespeare in Detroit. Um, and she's currently serving as this nonprofit organization's uh, artistic director. She's the love of Detroit Public Schools, a former journalist, and has been a performer and creative for most of her life. White recently completed the Director's Intensive at Yale University, preceded by her time at the Tony Award winning regional theater, Utah Shakespeare Theater, which she directed Top Light this year. The Detroit News is honoring her this fall as one of the um, Mich Michiganians of the year, and she will also be inducted into the Montford High School Hall of Fame with the Emmy Award. And on that note, I'd like to welcome Sam White. Raise your hand. <laughs> oh wow, almost everybody. That's so cool. Okay, so who knows it? Does anybody know a Shakespeare quote? Does anybody know a Shakespeare quote? Anybody? I do. Okay, nice. Eat some fruit. That's a good one. How about, does anybody, especially my little people, has anyone heard knock knock who's there? Yeah? Well then guess what? You know Shakespeare. That's right. Knock knock who's there came from a play called Make that. So you know Shakespeare. And then other people took it and used it for their own. So everybody in this room, and this is great information for me, knows not that who's there. So everybody in this room knows Shakespeare. Yeah, you know, me too. I love Huck That's and Titania. Oh my goodness, mine too. We'll have to tune on yet. I love it. Yeah, so, so my name is Sam, or as my students call me, Miss Sam. And I run an organization called Shakespeare in Detroit. And this year we're doing a program that's called Shakespeare STEAM. We're collaborating with teachers or educators um, for, for STEAM programming. And what that means for us is, in theater, is the science of lighting a play, the lights that you see in a show, the technology of the sound that you might hear in a play, like if you heard horses coming or bells and other sounds like that. The engineering of a form, and what kind of form, what kind of engineering do I mean? I mean the costumes that you see people like Titania or Tuck wear, or Romeo wear, or Juliet wear. And then there's the arts, of course, the A and theme, which is the work that we do as actors. And then the mathematics of building a set. And I know when I was in a school, the best way that I learned how to do math was actually by using things like Legos or blocks or Play-Doh. And so our kids, our third graders, when they're learning how to build a set at the schools that we work at at Shakespeare in Detroit, they'll build their sets from things like Legos. So that when they get big, they can know how to make even bigger sets for really, really big plays, which is really cool and really fun. Um, yeah, so we're excited to teach the whole of theater because I think a lot of times when people think of theater, they just think of actors. And I have to tell you that it's so much more than that, right? You wouldn't be able to see us or hear us if there weren't people doing the sound and the lights. And then you wouldn't be able to, uh, to see the actors wear beautiful costumes if there weren't costume designers making beautiful forms or wardrobe for the, for the actors to wear. So that's why when we talk about Shakespeare, we talk about STEAM, because it all matters. So our new educational pilot is, uh, is Shakespeare in Detroit is exciting for us because we're helping a new generation. Many members of that new generation are in, in the audience today. Think of theater um, holistically, the whole of it. Acting is one of many parts of the play. And in addition, we're excited to supplement it because we're working with the math teachers and the science teachers and the English teachers. So supplementing the work that they're already doing in the classroom with a little bit of theater, right? So really, the teachers love when they're there because instead of them writing on a board all day with the students, they have us in the room figuring out how we can work together to make science, technology, engineering, and math even more um, dramatic for students. So that's really, really fun. Um, I went to Detroit Public Schools as a kid from kindergarten until I graduated in the 12th grade from Mumford. Um, like Kim said, I think I'm being inducted into the Mumford Hall of Fame, which I just think is, is so hilarious. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> such an honor because I'm a, a DPS kid. So we're starting our work with Shakespeare STEAM in Detroit schools, and that's just because that kind of is where I was reared. But we're hoping to share this program uh, throughout Southeast 
Southeast Michigan, and hopefully eventually the entire state, because I'm telling you, I can't express in a talk how much fun we're having in the classroom. It's nearly impossible. You have to come see the work that we're doing at these three schools, and that's Bog School, Clifford Academy, and uh, DSA, which is also the Detroit School of Arts. And then, I don't know if you've heard of this, but there's a new school at Mary Grove, which used to be a college, that's called the School at Mary Grove. And every year they're adding a grade. So right now they only have ninth graders. Next academic year they'll have 10th graders, and then so forth and so on. But I'm proof that when you expose a child to the arts, the possibilities are endless, really. And the impact of the arts is not exclusive to me. Kids or students all over the world have been and will be deeply impacted by the arts, and the proof is, what does the S in STEAM stand for? Who can tell me? Right, and the proof is science. I'm so excited. We're gonna talk about <laughs> Romeo and Juliet in just a minute. Isn't that exciting? We're gonna, I'm gonna do a little Juliet for you. And I hope, oh, I hope that you approve. <laughs> we'll see how I do, okay? So in 2013, um, psychologists at the University of Arrivo realized an experiment with a group of teenagers who were suffering from depression and anxiety, um, and also from psychosomatic symptoms such as neck and back pain. Half of them were asked to attend a dance class, and the other half, they asked them to just stick with their regular routine and guess who thrived? Can anybody guess who thrived? Tell me who they thrived. The ones who went to the dance class. That's right, that's right. And a, a two year study by the researchers at the Brain and Creativity Institute at the University of Southern California shows that exposure to music and music instruction accelerates the brain, right? It's the development of young children in the areas responsible for language development, sound, reading skills, and speech perception. And these are just a couple of studies about the arts that serve as proof points of the impact of the A in STEAM. And who can tell me what the A in STEAM stands for? Who wants to tell me? Somebody tell me. What's A? Arts, that's right, yes. I have the best Ed Talk audience ever, that's right. The A in STEAM stands for the arts. And, it, and those studies show how we can change lives like mine when kids are exposed to the arts early. Emphasis on early. Yeah. Can somebody spell early for me in the audience? Who can spell early for me? Yeah. You know, you got a hand in the back. Wait, do I have a, do I have a spelling in the back? You know? <laughs> Who else can spell early for me? Right here on the end. What's your name? Isaiah, how do you spell early? Yes, E-A-R-L-Y. So if you expose kids to the arts, what word was that? Right? Early, then it's gonna impact their lives. How amazing is that? Wow, this is the best audience ever. I'm so lucky, thank you friends. Okay, and we've been very busy at Shakespeare in Detroit. This is our website for any of the parents who might wanna check it out at shakespeareindetroit.com. Working with our school partners, we usually use a tool in the classroom which you can totally order as well if you want to give it to your kids at home. It's called Good Tickled Brain. And that's a line from Henry the, the Fourth, Part One. It's Good Tickled Brain. And what she has, her name is Mia Gosling. She's a comic strip artist. She created uh, comic strips for all 37 of Shakespeare's plays. So you can literally read the complete works in probably 20 minutes with the Complete Works comic strip. And we use that in all of our classrooms to make it really easy and accessible for kids to understand Romeo and Juliet or A Midsummer Night's Dream. That's right, <laughs> that's right. And so a good tickle break if you wanna, if you wanna look for resources, easy for, I would say, third to eighth graders to understand. We use it in the classrooms. A uh, couple examples of, of some of the activities that we do in the classrooms for third to eighth graders that you can do at home include teaching the kids the math of Shakespeare, which for us adults is called iambic pentameter, but for kids it's just counting your syllables. Who knows what a syllable is? Let's see if I got anybody in here who knows what a syllable is. You know what What's So when you hear big grown-ups 
so where you hear adults talking about, I, it's called, this, it's this real fancy word. They make it too fancy. I am a pentameter when it comes to Shakespeare. All it really is, is what? A syllable. That's right, a syllable. That's all it is. And so our kids learn Shakespeare by breaking it down into syllables for them, which actually might help some adults too who may have a problem with Shakespeare. Other activities that we do with our kids at Shakespeare Detroit with our program Shakespeare STEAM is at Clifford Academy we have two groups of students. We have Capulets, because Juliet was a Capulet, and we have Montagues. And each, each group, each family, or each household is responsible for building a house for their household. The very first line in Romeo and Juliet is, two households, both alike in dignity. And so if you're a Capulet, you have to take as many popsicle sticks as you can to build a house for the Capulets. And if you're a Montague and you've been put into that family, you have to take a group of popsicle sticks and figure out how to build a house for that, that particular family. And all you have is popsicle glue, popsicles glue and also a little bit of paint. And that requires knowing your math because if you don't weigh the popsicles correctly and they're leaning against each other, they can crash and fall and you won't have a house. And also you have to learn how to work with your partner to make sure if they're working on the right wall of the, the house and the other person is working on the left wall of the house, that that all stays together. So again, theater is math, theater is engineering, in addition to being the A in STEAM. And the A in STEAM stands for what? Arts. Arts, that's it, yes. Okay, I love this group, you are, you are just the best. Yes, and our high schoolers, and this is an invite for anybody who wants to come, and this will be up on our website beginning Monday if you forget what I've told you today, because I'm telling you before we tell anybody. Our high schoolers at DSA will be performing Romeo and Juliet in a 75 minute production, so it's been cut, right, because it's usually about three and a half hours, at DSA on November 14th, 15th, and 16th. And anybody is invited to come. So the kids who are performing are in ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, and then we have a couple of seniors. And all of the kids, the younger kids who we're working with at Boggs and at Clifford Academy will be joining us to see that show as well. And the great news is when they show up, when they show up, they'll have an understanding of why the lights might be blue and why one light might be red and it's making purple because they'll understand the science of lighting. They'll also understand why that balcony is able to stay put without falling on the actors, right? Geometry is not, has never been as important as it is in theater. If you don't measure the pieces of the wood, of the, of the uh, plaster, and, and the other elements of the stage correctly, then an actor can get hurt, right? So it's very important to pay attention in math class when you want to be a designer for a set in theater. Can somebody tell me what the M in STEAM stands for? The M in STEAM? Math. <laughs> math. Math, that's right. It stands for math. And I feel like we didn't, we didn't, we didn't give the T any love. Can somebody tell me what the T is? Technology. Oh, my that's technology. It. Technology. That's it. Technology. That's it. Wow, well, guess what? 
You are in the right room. That's right. All of our kids make roughs for themselves. And they usually make them out of paper and a little bit of string. Because what you find is if you just fold, fold the paper in lots of little folds, once you unfold it like an accordion, it fits beautifully around your neck. And that's considered one of our engineering exercises for Shakespeare's theme. So that's right. We're learning the whole of theater. Because theater is more than what you see on stage. The industry, I'm going to tell this to the parents, the industry, the theater industry, we need more than actors. We have a lot of actors. <laughs> we need carpenters, designers, lighting technicians, and other skilled tradespeople to make plays that make for healthy actors look and sound good. Or better, they sound good. <laughs> The skills that we're teaching our third to 12th grade students are also transferable skills that will only help improve their college experience. And these are skills that they can also use in their professional careers. And speaking of transferable skills that students can use for the rest of their lives, like me, because I learned Shakespeare at eight years old. I'll tell you the story real briefly. So my mom, who's still very strict, did not allow us to listen to rap music. Um, she, you still can not come into her house and listen, that just, I mean, don't do it. I'm telling you, if you ever meet her, don't play rap music. Um, and so she caught me listening to uh, Salt and Pepper, and she knocked on my door because it was closed. I don't know how she has ears that work like that, speaking of sound. And, uh, and when I opened the door, she had a big smelly book in her hands, and that smelly book she had taken from the attic, it was the complete works, and she made me read it from the beginning of the book until the end of the book. It took me until I was 16, so that was eight years. But eventually, I finished the play, and now I'm standing here as the artistic director of Shakespeare in Detroit. And so, um, yeah, just, just a quick example from one of the plays, Romeo and Juliet, um, and about those transferable skills that kids can use for the rest of their lives. Uh, Shakespeare teaches pronunciation, syntax, modulation, and comprehension. It shows the difference between, if I were to say, what's in the name that which we call a rose? And what's in the name that which we call a rose? We use the rhythm of the 10 syllables or the five d dums because that's the rhythm of Shakespeare, and the dums are always bigger than the d's. Be dum, be dum, be dum, be dum, be dum. So if you have a line like, what's in a name that which we call a rose? It's 10 syllables. What's in a name that which we call a rose? And it's five d dums. What's in the name in which we call a rose? And that's how the actors are able to sustain their energy, energy in the text. And this helps us keep the text alive and fun and beautiful, which is why it's very hard to learn Shakespeare sitting down at the desk reading it. He wrote it so that it could be played on stage, not read in a book, even though my mama made me read it, obviously. <laughs> um, oh, and there's other, other tools if you're gonna if you're gonna read Shakespeare to your kids, and that's really leaning into the verbs, because the verbs are where the action are. So um, and just to demonstrate a couple of the tools that we use in Shakespeare, we lean into our verbs, we list all the list that Shakespeare gives us. So in Juliet's What's in a Name monologue, we have a list of um, hand, foot, arm, face, or any other part. We really emphasize that. And anytime you see an O in Shakespeare, can everybody say O? Oh. 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 oh! It's always as big as the way you did it. So here's a really popular, a really popular monologue, and we'll finish this up quickly. So I can show you how you use those tools. Counting syllables, keeping the energy in the words, and making your O really big, and listing your list. Tis but thy name that is my enemy. Thou art thyself, though not a Montague. What's Montague? It is nor hand, here's the list, nor foot, nor arm, nor face, nor any other part belonging to a man. Can everybody give me a big O? Oh! Oh, no. oh be some other name. What's in the name in which we call a rose? By any other name would smell as sweet. So Romeo would, were he not Romeo called, retain that dear perfection which he owes without the title. Romeo doth thy name, and for that name which is no part of thee, take all myself. So. That's what Shakespeare is, you know? It's not some fancy, hard thing to learn. It's verbs, it's lists, it's vowels, it's consonants, it's poetry, it's all it's those fun. things. It's fun! Yes, Dante! <laughs> you are in the right room! It's all of those things that we use today. And, uh, you know, a, a researcher said that children learn implicitly without 
conscious thought, reflection, or effort, while adults learn explicitly, which means by analyzing, which is why I always tell everybody, I'd rather teach a third grader Shakespeare than a 30-year-old. It's a lot easier. I've only heard adults say Shakespeare is hard. I've never heard a kid say that, ever, in all the time that I've been teaching Shakespeare. So what's in a name, after all, friends, right? That which we call a rose like any other name would smell as sweet. I hope that one day, the name Shakespeare is more than some sort of scary thing, and instead we think of it as a gift for everybody, and that theater is more than just the A in the steam. It's also the science of lighting, the technology of sound, the engineering of a former costume, and the mathematics of building a set. Thank you so much, everyone.